All right, guys, just had kind of an unusual lock show up at the lock lab. I, I bought this off of eBay from a dealer in uh, Ukraine. Uh, it, it was 42 bucks advertised as an antique, and it may or may not be. I really don't know. $18.50 shipping, so got about 60 bucks in this. There's no engraving on this thing. There's obviously a casting depression there. And on the top, there is a logo, and I have no idea what that is. It looks something to do maritime. I mean, it's an aluminum body lock, an aluminum core, and you'll see by the design of this that there's not a lot of moving parts. So it would be perfect uh, for a marine environment, if indeed that's what that's for. No clue. Uh, steel shackle, everything down here is aluminum to include the body of what appears to be a Ural cylinder, but I don't think it's a standard Ural cylinder. And uh, it's obviously a, a cast aluminum core on this as well, and you'll see why in just a minute. Uh, pretty simple so far. There's one pin, uh, a recessed pin that holds the shackle in place. Very powerful spring that you'll see in a moment. And then another uh, recessed pin there that goes right through the body and holds that, that uh, core inside of there. The pins don't protrude through the other side, so you can't punch them out and get in this thing. You're not going to be shimming this thing um, because it has a unique locking system. I got three keys with it. Um, here's what your key looks like. It's kind of unusual because we got a weird... And I don't know what this is for. A weird little cutaway on the tip here. I hope it doesn't have to do with like, I don't know, a secret pin or lever or something. But I do know that it makes it hard to align the key. So if it, you really have to be careful without that bottom part to give you a nice little shoot. It tends to snag up on the warding. You got to push it all the way to the top. Then it'll go in. It'll rotate 180 degrees. Now, unlike a lot of the locks from that part of the world, this one opens clockwise. No spring tension, nothing. Just drags all the way around. And watch this. Super powerful spring inside of there. Now, first question that pops in my mind, why do you got to rotate this thing so far? Well, if you look down the side of there, and I will get a light, it's in the open position, so there's nothing blocking it. Whatever locks this up has to fit into this half-moon cutaway. So, and I look in there, I really don't see any mechanism, but when I rotate the key, and again, I'm going to rotate it halfway so you can really see what's going on here. You see that? That's the core. So what they did, that's the core now, it's in the lock position, I think. The core, the rounded part of the core is what fits into that half moon cutaway. So what they did is they took the lock cylinder, they slid it in there, they peened it in place, recessed that screw, then they took a drill and they drilled down through this cast bodied lock to cut away half of the core. Now, when I rotate it this way, the uncut half of the core rotates out and fits into that. Isn't that cool? Very simple. And that's what kind of leads me to the conclusion it might be maritime in nature. Very few moving parts, no special actuators or locking mechanism or locking pulse, nothing. It's, it's, a, it's just a simple core. Very solid lock, even though you got a gap there. You will never shim this thing. And because it doesn't protrude all the way through, you're not going to be punching it out. So pretty well thought out, very simple design. Um, when we look at the keyway, it's a little bit nasty. Um, there's a little warding on the left side. So I might as well use bottom of the keyway. So I'll try this guy. And that, uh, oh, wait a minute. It looks like he might be pinching a little. Let's try Try that one. All right, that gets up. Got to be real careful. We have aluminum body, aluminum core, and aluminum against aluminum likes to gall. And if I pinch this in there, then it'll totally seize it up. But I think, I think that's pretty free. All right, I'm going to try to address something else now, since it's all a coin toss as to whether this works. A lot of you guys have been saying, hey, Bill, and I've showed this off before, you got an awful lot of picks, but you always seem to use hooks. Why don't you stop raking and use, why don't you use a half diamond? And I understand, I, I've got them there in my rack here. I got a couple different sizes. I got uh, a 15 and a 25 thousandths in the standard half diamond. And then I got that big boy right there with, I, I usually use him for picking dimple locks. And I think he would be a good choice. I'll use this today. I understand these are really popular. A lot of guys use just a half diamond and, and I see why. These are really nothing but hooks. So if you take off that front part there and just look at the tip of that, that's a nice medium hook with a nice sharp angle on it to help you get uh, around any low-cut pins. So it really is a good choice. 
An added advantage of this is that because he's got that little slope on both sides, you can slide him in and out, you can rake with him. And the reason I keep this guy around, you can probably tell by the beveled tip here, I use that guy to pick uh, dimple locks. I slide it in sideways, and by having that angled, it just kind of like shoehorns him below all the pins, then I can start picking like that. So it really is a useful pick. I just don't often pick pin tumblers with it. But today, make you guys happy, I think I'll give it a shot. All right, let's zoom in a little bit. And hopefully that's focused. I'll try to keep my fat thumb out. Anything right here is what gets focused on by this camera. So I'll try to keep the lock there and keep my thumb not there. How about that? All right, I'm going to slide all the way in. He might be a little tight, but we'll try it. We'll try it. Once I've got the pick all the way in, I'm going to apply a little tension, light, and see if I can find a binder. And it feels like I started pulling them out. Everything's springy back there until I get to pin, there's like three. That was a little mushy. Let me try it again. I'm going to apply a little heavier tension this time because I felt like I mushed two pins right there at the, in the middle. There he is, right there. So we're looking at pin, about pin three, I think. Well, that's a pretty good click. Let's keep looking. Okay, there's pin two, a little click on him. Three is falling back down. I gotta click on him. Well, maybe there is a trick lever back there. I don't know. I don't feel anything. Let's recock it and try it again all the way in. This time I'm going to use pretty exceptional tension. Very heavy. Okay, now everything's binding up. That's probably not a good thing, but I'll start there. Okay, that was pin 5. Okay, there's pin 1. Again, the angle on the front of that, so I'm just basically sliding it, pushing against him, and then using this levering action to get under him. I just did. Okay, I'm pin three. Same thing. A little levering to push him up out of the way slowly. Ease him into position, I hope. Pin five, and there we go. All right, guys, there you go. A Russian no-name, or actually a Ukrainian no-name, maybe maritime lock picked with... A half diamond. These are great. I don't know why I don't use these more often. They do give you a little more flexibility because they let you slide that up under the pin and then slowly lever them up, as opposed to getting the tip of the pick underneath the pin and then levering them up that way. Six of one, half dozen of the other. These are useful picks, and I'm sorry I don't use them more. Anyway, guys, there you go. Appreciate your time. Stay safe. Stay legal.